What's up, YouTube? I'm back. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing here. I'm trying something in a completely new format that I have never done before, and that involves live streaming. I'm not going to live stream here on YouTube. I'm going to live stream over on Twitch. I'll give you some more information about that uh, in a minute. And uh, I'm going to stream it live to Twitch, also record it as I'm streaming it, and then post the recorded video to YouTube because YouTube and Twitch are no longer friends, apparently. You can't connect accounts. There's like an auth error, and now Twitch has completely removed the like post over to YouTube connection in their back end. So I'm going to try. I don't know if my hardware is beefy enough, so this is kind of a first attempt at this. I'm going to try and record it and stream it at the same time. And then after I'm done streaming, it, I will upload the recorded version to YouTube so that those of you that follow me uh, over here on YouTube uh, can have access to this. And let me explain a little bit about what I'm doing. So I am in the process of redesigning the stat feeder hardware, formerly known as the smart puck. For those of you that uh, remember that right now inside of here, is a uh, the main chip is a particle p1 module and i um there's a podcast episode that i've done and a linkedin article that i'm going to post for all the reasons why i'm switching away from particles ecosystem but i'm redesigning on the esp32 this is a dev board i don't know if you guys can see that uh, it's this module right here uh, it's a slightly smaller than the p1 um and has way more features and all this other stuff and, and like i said i i I'm not going to explain all the reasons why right now, but what I want to do is I want to show the process that goes into creating a project uh, from nothing, even though I'm not starting from, from nothing here. And so what I want to stream through Twitch is everything that you have to do to get something like this out of your brain and into the world. And so <clears throat> A little bit of background on that before I jump into the stream portion of this is that um, I created the schematic for most of the smart puck. I had uh, agility. Uh, if you guys remember episodes about them, agility um, design the power circuitry and do the, you know, the board layout, the case design and some things like that. Um, they did a fantastic job, but I don't have access to the software that they use to build all that in, which is Altium. And I could get it, I could buy a license. Um, Agility was super kind and even offered to let me use their license um, after uh, we had kind of finished our, our contract together because they're just awesome people. Um, but, uh, so I don't have Agility, uh, not Agility, I don't have Altium. And so what I wanna do is move everything over into KiCad uh, so that I personally can do it. Um, um, I basically transport the, the schematic that I have in PDF form into KiCad, do all the board layout myself. Like I, I, that's not something I'm an expert at, but I want to go through all of these steps, the board layout, the prototyping, and and basically stream and show all of the stuff that goes into creating a product uh, from scratch. And so uh, that's the idea. I want to share it. Like I said, I'm going to live stream it on Twitch, uh, but also record those, assuming my hardware is powerful enough to do that. I don't know if you guys can even hear my laptop fan right now. It, is, it sounds like a 747 about to take off. I've tried to filter that out, so hopefully that's working. Um, but hopefully that all works, and then I can upload them to YouTube. You guys can watch them uh, here on YouTube. And then also, if you're interested, you can catch me on the live stream on Twitch. Um, part of that, which is interesting for me, is full-time job, family. I've got a lot of kids it's never a good time to stream. It's a Saturday right now. And a kid could walk through the door any second, like screaming because they fell and scraped their knee. I don't know, but sitting here saying I'm never going to do it because there's never a good time. And the only good time is late at night. And then sometimes I'm super tired and I got other things to do. I'm just turning the camera on and streaming. So you're going to get a super raw version of, of this process. And so that's what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the stream on so it'll start streaming to Twitch because I want to walk through the schematic briefly before I do a stream on the board layout, which is something that we're doing um, soon. And so um, that's it. That's what's happening. I hope you enjoy it. I would love to hear your feedback. And so um, if you'll just bear with me, I'm, I'm not even going to edit this. I'm just literally going to hit the start streaming button and start streaming to Twitch, which uh, bear with me. I'm going to open my Twitch dashboard so that I can make sure everything is working right. Yep. 
Twitch just throws you right into live streaming. Okay, so I've got my dashboard open. Um, uh, just got to get over to the stream manager. Okay, all right. We're gonna go ahead and hit start streaming. As I learned the first time I streamed, it takes a few seconds for the stream to pick up. So, um, all right, so here we are. Hopefully my hardware can support both streaming and uh, recording since the Twitch inter integration does not work with YouTube anymore. That's what I've found. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna switch off the camera here and just go into the monitor and talk about the schematic for our Product. And again, sorry, nope, I'm going to pull the camera back on for a second. This is what we have built. Uh, While well, you can see that, it is a, it's an actual hockey puck oh, um, that has hardware in it. And in fact, let me show you. Here's a standalone, like the case of the hardware. You know, it's about this big. It's got an e-paper display in it, a uh, USB port on the side there. Um, and all of that is on a printed circuit board that looks like this. And so what we're doing is we're redesigning the schematic to no longer use the particle P1 module, but use an ESP32, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, ROOM, W-R-O-O-M module. And so uh, I want to walk through, just take a minute to walk through the schematic to show you uh, what that looks like. I've ported all of this from Altium. Uh, well, a PDF export of Altium over into KiCad so that um, I can, KiCad's open source free and, and is very capable. And so this is my attempt. I'm, I'm not a professional schematic creator, if that's even a thing, I'm sure it is. Um, and so this is how I have built it in uh, KiCad. Now it doesn't look very complicated and that's because I'm using something called hierarchical sheets in KiCad. It's a feature. And so these blocks that you see, and we'll look at each one here in a second, are actually separate schematics. And so this helps me visualize how the system works at a high level. It's not just a huge um, single sheet of schematic layout where um, you have to, it gets a little no excuse me, noisy that way when you do it that way. So um, this is it, this this blob right here in the middle. You can see right here, it's this is the ESP32, um, Room 32D module. And so let's just go through this really quick. That's what I wanna do today is just briefly take you through the schematic to show you all of the different parts that are involved. Um, I'm gonna switch back to the camera here real quick. So this is called the ESP32 Dev Kit C. And um, it's got a USB port on it. It's got the module, uh, two buttons for uh, boot and enable. And that's pretty much it. And then it breaks out all the pins on the headers here. Uh, so you can plug it into a breadboard. It's actually really wide, so it doesn't fit nicely on a breadboard. So I'm gonna actually just put two breadboards side by side and had it bridge across them so that I can hook up, you know, an e-paper display there like that. Um, and so the, the dev kit, basically just has the sp32 module on it and some supporting uh circuitry so that you can connect it via usb if we want to use it in a product we have to take that main module and add all of that supporting circuitry ourselves and all the additional things that our product needs to function and so let me just walk you through this really quickly um i, I read the schematic and this is just how it makes most sense to me from left to right so if you picture the left side here of where you plug in, um, it flows through the system to the display over here on the right. Anyway, that, that makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anybody else, but as in all things, do what makes sense uh, to you. So um, you can see right here, this sheet is labeled USB in, and if I double click on it, and I'll zoom that in so you can see it. Uh, this is uh, right here on the left. This is the USB port that comes in, you know, and things that you don't think about on all these dev boards that you have to, you know, take into account are things like, oh, you got a fuse in here and an inductor to help uh, all these capacitors for filtering, um, TDS diodes to protect the data lines. And this is everything that goes into just getting the USB uh, signal lines and power into uh, the device. And so from there, uh, the reason I broke these out into two blocks here, I've got a power block and a USB to serial is 
The USB to serial, um, I, I'm a programmer um, for decades, and so I really like this idea of abst abstraction. So if I click into this USB to serial, uh, the ESP32 does not have USB built into it. You have to uh, translate basically USB signals into serial signals for the ESP32. And so you can see right here the, the USB data um, minus and data plus lines come into, I'm using an FTDI chip. And then out of the FTDI chip, I get things like the, the transmit signal, the receive signal, the RTS and DTR lines. Um, power it over USB, but I put this in its own sheet because what if I want to change this to like an SI Labs chip? Um, I just make the changes in here. It's kind of very abstracted to the whole design of the circuit. And so you can see the five volt comes out. Let me zoom in on this so you can see a little better. The five volt comes out of my USB in circuitry and goes into the VUSB here of the USB to serial. And if I double click on that, you can see VUSB comes right in here and um, powers it. This is how you use hierarchical sheets in KiCad uh, to accomplish sort of this, you know, abstraction and separation. So um, also out of the USB, I not only go into that, oh, and then, sorry, you can see that these now go to TX and RX branches, which will connect over here, right here, TX and RX to the uh, ESP32 module itself. And so this this idea right here helps keep the schematic clean so you don't have to run this wire. You know, if I zoom out here a little bit, um, instead of running these wires all the way over here and down and around and crossing over all these wires to connect up, um, sometimes you'll see I, I run the wires where it makes sense and there's not a lot of crossover. Other times, at least for me, it's better to just label them like this and then label them over here. And then the, the program, KiCad, knows to, to electrically connect them. Um, you just don't see the actual line drawn. And so um, that's how we do that. So, <clears throat> all right, so from the USB, we come up here into what I call the power block. And if we go into that, there's a couple of things going on in there. There's two main things going on here. We have a charge circuit and we have a linear voltage regulator. The charge circuit, because I have a lithium ion battery, um, you can see that this connector right here, this J2, that's where we connect our battery. Um, this will charge that battery when we're plugged into USB and um, supplies an output voltage, whether from USB or from the battery. This, this chip right here handles all that decisioning um, and then passes it. You can see, um, oh, where is it? Charge out right here. You can see I labeled this charge out and that's what feeds into the linear voltage regulator which then spits out our nice clean 3.3 volts, which is what the ESP32 needs to run, what our display needs to run and everything else. And so this is really the power block. All of these supporting resistors, um, you can look in data sheets for charge circuits. They help determine things like how quickly to try and charge the lithium battery. Um, again, a lot of things you need to consider when you're building this is the battery itself will have a rating of like how much current you can pump into it to charge it. Um, these are things like 1C, half C, um, and they, they'll, the battery will have a limit saying, you can physically charge me this fast. However, when you do that, it's gonna get warm. And when you have something like I do inside of a solid chunk of ru rubber with no vents, you have to say, well, do I wanna charge it that fast or do I wanna charge it a little bit slower? Uh, and then you're looking in data sheets, like what is the the, the heat, uh, what am I trying to, uh, the thermal profile of the battery at different C charge rates and decide, you know, how fast do I wanna charge it? How fast do I need to charge it? And then you have to select all these components to determine, you know, how fast it's gonna uh, charge, how long it will time out. Um, some, a combination of some of these resistors say, hey, listen, try to charge the battery for eight hours. If it's not charged after eight hours, just stop and just, stop charging so a lot of decisions and component selection you know it looks fine when it's all done but like choosing every single one of these values um, takes quite a bit of data sheet reading and um, understanding of how you're going to deploy the product in the uh, in the consumer uh, in the consumer's hands and so uh, and then things like this the linear regulator you have to choose like how much uh, what's the um, 
quiescent current of the regulator, like how much power is it gonna use even when the thing's turned off or in deep sleep mode? How much power can it provide? I believe the regulator I'm using here can um, source an amp of current, but you know, there's some regulators that will only source 300 milliamps or half, a, half an amp, 500 milliamps, and that might not be enough. And in the case of my scenario, that's not gonna be enough for an ESP32 that's doing Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a huge power hog if you're not familiar with it. And so an amp should be sufficient. Um, this was sufficient for the P1, I think, looking through the data sheet, it should be sufficient for the ESP32 module, but that is something that we'll uh, figure out as we go. Um, we'll, we'll just see as we test it out, we may need to change this part, but hopefully not. So, all right, so that's the power block. Again, with this hierarchical sheets, you've got five volts coming in, and then you've got the 3.3 volts coming out. And it also outputs these two symbols, um, signals charge and p good charge is active low meaning it will be at ground or zero volts when the a battery is charging and then uh, i pipe this into the esp32 so that i can um in my firmware know whether the battery's charging or not charging and then p good is just an indicator that you have a valid power source plugged in and so when you're running off of battery power p good will be high when you're plugged into usb and there's actually five volts present on this pin right here p good will be pulled low and that's great for making decisions in firmware of oh hey i'm i'm actually connected to external power maybe i don't need to be so um maybe i don't need to be so cautious in, in how I'm using power at the moment. And so um, that's the power block. And from there, you can see that the power block outputs 3.3 volts, it connects up. There's some supporting components to the ESP32. I won't get into what's going on down here. Uh, this is the short version is this helps facilitate programming the ESP32 in hands-free mode. So that was one of my biggest hassles with the particle P1. It it had no hands-free way of doing so many things. You had to use the buttons and you had to have buttons. And so, um, turn the camera back on here for a second. This puck, which again, has no buttons. It just has a USB port on the side and a screen. This thing has two physical buttons inside of it that nobody's ever gonna see or press. I just need them for programming the device, which, um, is dumb and it also costs money. Like th those are parts that I have to populate on a board that get used once and then are never touched again. And so that goes away with the ESP32. I'm really excited about that. It should, um, the way we have it with the FTDI chip and things, I should be able to basically simulate button presses with uh, this circuitry down here and a USB connection. So really excited about that. Um, up here, we've got, uh, this is like the JTAG uh, stuff so that we can, uh, hook up and program over a JTAG thing or do remote debugging, not remote debugging, just debugging. Um, and then finally down here, um, we have our display, which I'll go into in a second. Again, you can see here, I've just kind of labeled some of these. They'll tie in over here. I didn't want to connect them and have this a bunch of crossed rat's nest of lines and schematics. So that's just a personal preference. Some people like to to follow them and see them because the the positive is you can just visually follow a line like this 3.3 volt i can just follow it over and see that it connects whereas if i look at okay spi3 clock now i gotta go find that somewhere um you can use tools in the software to find it pretty easy though so that's why i like to do it this way and then the, the last part of this is if i just come into here this is the display um this is my e-paper display from good display and a lot of supporting components for this to work. This is the 24 pin connector that the display connects into. You can see a ton of capacitors um, and some diodes up here. I've got a, an N uh, channel MOSFET that um, is required. And so this is mostly supplied. I, I've done a lot of uh, trial and error and learning back and forth with the, the manufacturer to get to this state um, to where the displays uh, work correctly. These e-paper displays are fantastic little devices. They're, they're zero power when they're not being used and very low power to update. And so uh, a lot of fun. And so that, uh, that's it. You know, that's, that's, what I think is mostly everything that we'll need to build our um, dev kit. 
um, what we want to do is turn this into an e-paper dev kit that other people can use to write their own uh, firmware and things for. So um, that's it. I just wanted to give you sort of a, a tour around the block, as it were, of the schematic to show, you know, you see these and sometimes for a lot of people, they understand how they work and how to follow the signals and things like that. For other people, it's, you know, Greek. They don't understand any of it. Uh, and for some people, though, they, they see it and they can follow the lines, but they don't quite understand all of the decisions. Every component on here is um, chosen for a reason, you know. So like when you come into here and that's the hardest part about this, like this, this is a 10K resistor from the enable pin up to 3.3 volts. It's a pull up resistor. Well, why 10K? Why not 100K? Why not 1K? And there's reasons, and sometimes it matters less than others. Sometimes you could, um, it doesn't have to be that um, precise. And sometimes you make the decision based on, oh yeah, this could be anywhere between 10K and maybe 20K, but you know what? I've got seven other 10K resistors, and so let me use 10K, that way that'll keep my, my number of parts that I have to order down. And uh, so that's those are things that you think about as well. N not things you think about at all when you're just breadboarding, you're like, I don't know, just grab a resistor out of my, my box that'll work and put it in here. Every single component on this schematic is chosen very specifically. Um, and, and in the power block case, like I was explaining, like you see here, 71.5, let me zoom in on that. This guy right here, that is a very specific value. That can't be, you know, 68 something, this 1.5 K it's, it's being used in a, in an equation inside the chip to determine a charge rate or a discharge rate. And so they do need to be exact. Um, let me show you actually one more example, um, down here, this, let me zoom in this one right here. R20 is a three ohm resistor. That is very exact. I believe it's a 1% tolerant. A lot of these other resistors are 10% tolerances, which means, you know, it could be within 10% of 10K. The three is a 1% tolerance. Like we can't afford that to not be three ohms or very, very close to three ohms. And so um, that's it. That's, that's the schematic. Just wanted to, um, like I said, take you for a tour around the block, show you what, what's there and um, what's involved, give you an idea. The next thing that we're going to do, I'll give you a sneak preview is the board layout and so i was gonna start this on the stream but then got cold feet because i never like it took me this is this is sad everybody i'm sorry it took me probably three hours to get this uh yellow outline um just the way it is um and then actually i can do let me show uh, show all layers you know i've already started a little bit into the layout i i, I think i'm gonna restart it on the stream to show you um, the process of that. And I'll just, so I'll just remove everything that's on here right now and, and start it over. And so uh, that's gonna do it for the stream right now. Um, next time, like I said, we're gonna get into layout so that we can um, get this off to, uh, to get a test run done. One thing I do need to do before I lay this all out um, is, you know what, I'm gonna stream, if you're watching the stream, I'm going to stream again later. I, I, I'm not going to explain it right now. Um, we need to do a, a pre-run before we do the pre-run, a pre-pre-run before we do a pre-run. And I'll explain that um, on the next time. So uh, that's going to do it for right now, guys. I uh, hope you'll join me next time. Okay, YouTube, that's it. I just ended the stream on Twitch. I'm back talking to you. Um, that's the format. I would love, again, your feedback on it. If you want to follow me on Twitch, the username is uh, Kevin Sidwar. I'm going to put it down in the description so that you can um, follow me over there, come on the streams. I would love to have people, excuse me, I would love to have people on the stream. Um, you can ask questions. I, I, I would love to interact with people. Um, not something I can do on YouTube other than in the comments. And why not live stream through YouTube? That's a good question. I don't really have a good answer. I've always wanted to mess with Twitch. Um, they seem to have this down to a real science. Um, and so I'm gonna try this, see how it works. Again, I would love to hear your feedback. Um, otherwise, that's gonna do it for today's episode of, I don't even know, it's not even a show anymore. It's just, we're working on a project. Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, sorry, real quick, and then I'll wrap this up, is that um, yes, I'm redesigning the puck hardware, but I am also turning this into a dev kit, like a pro maker dev kit, uh, e-paper. So kind of like this, like 
I showed earlier, this actual case with the screen so that you know people could turn this into a weather station or a tweet monitor or, or whatever. I wanna be able to make that and sell it to the maker community um, so that they can get their ideas. And again, in such a way that it is like production ready. It's It's got you on your way to a product saving you all of the hassle that I've gone through over the last two years, designing all this stuff and figuring it out and having to uh, troubleshoot it and debug it. So I'm gonna be sharing the board layout, going through all that, getting samples from Osh Park and uh, PCB way and stuff like that, as well as writing firmware, um, maybe some software and stuff all tying in. That's what I wanna do. I'm, I'm, I'm working on this anyway. And uh, I figured I could share, you know, the hardware's, come on, you could take my one of my pucks apart and see the hardware and reverse engineer it. Um, the real value add I have from a company standpoint is is our firmware and back end, but I do want to share sort of the hardware and kind of basic examples of how you could use it. So that's what we're doing. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, so I hope you guys can join me. And like I said, let me know um, how it works, how it feels, hate it, love it. Um, would love to hear from you down in the comments. Otherwise, uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks and have a great day.